Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to more Michigan softball action here live from the USF softball facility. Uh, we're just getting started here as Michigan faces off in their second game of the day against Illinois State. A uh, little later, expect or a little earlier start than expected caught us a little off guard. We're started up here. Uh, Michigan has led off this game. Lexi Blair is currently sitting on first base after getting walked there to start this one. Stepping up into the box now for the Wolverines is going to be, sorry, let me get my lineup and everything set here, is going to be Maddie Uden. Uden with a big game last game, looking to continue that as we are set to start here. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. This one fouled off to the backstop. Going to bring the count to 1-1. Michigan with a big win just about half an hour ago over Georgia State. Able to pull together a 6-1 to one victory after coming in late, uh, racking up four runs in the later innings. This is the 1-1 pitch. That one's going to be called a strike right down the middle for Uden. On the mound right now, we're going to have number 31, Leonard, for Illinois State. She's been dealing so far, throwing a little harder than Michigan faced last game. Here comes the 1-2. This one. Hard ground ball up the middle from Uden. That's going to move Blair over to second base. Bat staying hot for the Wolverines. Stepping up to the plate now for the Wolverines is going to be Lou Allen. Allen with a great game last game with a double and a home run late in the game. He's going to look to stay hot here as the Wolverines are off to a good start. No outs, two runners on bases. Lou Allen steps into the batter's box. Here comes the 0-0 pitch from Mac Leonard. This one, high and outside. Leonard pumping the strike zone and pumping the radar gun, for that matter, hitting 68 miles an hour on that one, throwing a little harder. The speed is going to be big difference for Michigan here. This one, low and outside. Mac now. Not wasting any time, getting right back in and out of that circle. 2-0 is the count to Lou Allen with two runners on base. Winding up, here's the 2-0. This one, line drive hard down the third baseline. It's going to be caught. Nice play there by Corsi sitting on third base. Allen with a hard hit ball, but a better defensive play. It's going to bring it to one out here as Overitis steps into the batter's box. Number 24, the lefty for Michigan. Looking to do some damage with one runner on scoring position, another on first base. One out here. Here's the 0-0 pitch. This one fouled right down in the dirt. That one's going to go foul. That ball bounced off home plate and bounced back over Borey's, the catcher's head. Count's going to be 0-1 here with one out for the Michigan Wolverines. Mac Leonard stepping back, checking her wristband. The windup, the 0 1. That one just outside as Overitis watches that one go by. Overitis taking her time, taking a deep breath, sitting there in the box with the 1 1 pitch set to come. Here it is. This one just misses the outside corner. Mac again pounding the glove. If you're just tuning in, this is WCBN coverage of Michigan softball here down in Tampa, Florida. My name is Charlie Brigham. Alongside me is Alex Drain. This one, that pitch from Leonard hit hard up the middle. There's going to be a play at the plate, and Lexi Blair is going to score. Overitis is going to make her way over to second base with an RBI single. She's going to advance the second on the double, or advance the second on the throw, rather. And Uden makes her way over to third base. Michigan out to an early 1-0 lead over Illinois State. Yeah, really good piece of hitting there from over right. It's just pounds it right back up the middle of Michigan on the board with the early lead. Stepping in the box right now is going to be Carson, the catcher for Michigan, the lefty. Two runners on in scoring position with only one out. First pitch swung on hard and missed. Mac Leonard able to blow that one by her.
Hannah Carson with an impressive showing in the last game, both offensively and defensively. She had a nice pickoff attempt at first base that didn't pan out. This pitch from Leonard goes high. Going to bring the count to 1-1. One, one. With Overitis on second and Uden on third, Hannah Carson looking to put a ball in play and maybe get an RBI here. This pitch, the 1-1, one, one, is going to go low into the dirt. Nice block there by the catcher. Gonna be 2-1 here as Hannah Carson steps back into the box. On deck, of course, is Juju Jimenez. She had a big game last game. The 2-1 pitch is gonna go high and inside. Carson ducks out of the way of that one. The count's gonna bump up to 3-1. Hitters count here for Carson. Looking to drive the fastball if she can get it. Michigan bench chattering up. Mack Leonard looking over towards her coach in their dugout, checks her wristband, the 3-1 pitch. Fastball got it, but swung on and missed by Carson. Gonna be a full count here with one out. Michigan's been real aggressive up the plate early, taking swings at about just anything close. Here's the full count, this pitch. Swung on and missed, low and outside. Real lazy swing there from Carson. Mack Leonard able to retire her for the second out of the inning. Yeah, you like to see that aggressiveness, but maybe just a little too reckless. Michigan only struck out once in that first game. Go down swinging there. It's going to be Julia Jimenez stepping into the box now. Number 17, the freshman, had a big game last game. This pitch oh. hit right back <laughs> at Mack Leonard. She makes a nice turnaround catch to snag that line drive. Just like that, Michigan looked like they could have done some damage, but unable to get that one. And now going to the bottom of the first, Michigan one, Illinois State zero. As Megan Bobian goes out there and ready to go to work here in the bottom of the first. I'm Alex Drain here to cover this Michigan and Illinois State softball game. Charlie Brigham has run out to grab a lunch break. I will carry you. And they're just getting ready to go to work. And this batting order for Illinois State, Leonard will lead off. One nothing. Michigan on top, Bobian gets ready to step on the rubber, checks the wristband, a wind up, and the pitch called strike to Leonard. It'll be Leonard, Moffitt, and Olsen here, one, two, three, to begin the bottom of the first. Bobian takes a quick side, puts the ball in the glove, the wind up, that pitch up a little high. We apologize if there is any buffering during this broadcast. As mentioned in the first game, the USF Wi-Fi does not treat our streaming service terribly kindly, so we are going off of a cell phone hotspot. We'll look to get better connection for the games tomorrow. Bobian's delivery there, low, two and one. As always, you can feel free to contribute to the live chat. Throw in any comments where you're listening from. We got a wide variety of locations for game number one in the morning. 2-1 count on Leonard. Bobian's wind up, the pitch, swing and a miss. Two and two. Straka went the distance in game one. Had a career high 16 strikeouts through seven innings of work, allowing just one run on a solo homer. And Michigan won six to one. Now number 14 ranked Wolverines. Battling here with the Redbirds from Tampa, Florida. The wind up, the 2-2. 
Well, that one looked pretty good, but they will call it a ball. And now the count goes to three and two. Umpires in this game, Tom Meyer behind home plate, Sally Keller at first, and Terry Holt at third base. A totally different crew than the one we just had. They probably have gone out to lunch too. 3-2 on the way, swing and a miss. And down goes Leonard. Bobian collects her first strikeout. And they'll throw it around the infield, which will bring up Moffitt. One of the things always to talk about with Illinois State is the long, long tenure of their head coach, Elise Fisher. Melinda Fisher, rather. Now in her 37th season at Illinois State. Bobian winds up, first pitch to Moffitt is swung on and hit pretty well into right field, but backing up and making the play, there is Gonzalez. And now two outs in the inning. Bobian, a lot more of a contact pitcher than Alex Sturaco, who goes more for the strikeouts. We see a decent hit ball there, but it does not drop in, and now that'll bring up Olsen. Bobian winds up, delivers the first pitch a little high. Megan wearing a pink bandana around the forehead. A new look. Haven't been quite as used to over her career, but the trademark sunglasses are on. She puts the ball in the glove, spins it, and winds up for the 1-0. It's a called strike, 1-1. One and one. Redbirds looking for their first base runner. The wind up, the pitch is a called strike right down the pipe and quickly to one and two. Michigan jumped out to an early lead against Georgia State and they were able to hang on to that lead. Now out to an early one nothing lead here in the first. The wind up, the one two, just a little down and outside. We've seen really nice job of framing today by Hannah Carson holding those balls a long time on the outer edges. And it worked to Storaco's advantage in game one, although most of her strikeouts were collected in the swinging variety. The 2-2, two -two. swing and a foul, late swing, and she pounds it into the dugout of her teammates in Illinois State. Michigan, despite being the away team in this game, decided to keep that same dugout, it made sense not to switch it around even though they were the home home team in the morning game. The wind up and the 2-2, swing and a miss. Bobian pulled the string with the changeup and she gets two strikeouts in that first inning. A 1-2-3 frame and the Michigan hitters will go back to work. Our score, Michigan one, Illinois State zero. We go to the second. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. We have a hello from Michigan, a hello from Iowa. Tuning in from a non-disclosed Midwestern location, says WCBN Sports alumni Austin Falco. A Stony Brook, Southwest Michigan, and Ann Arbor. And Illinois State will go back out there, start doing some warm-ups here in the top of the second. Once again, I'm Alex Drain. Charlie Brigham will be back in the broadcast later on after he finishes up having lunch, these two back-to-back -back games, not exactly conducive to eating. A short break in between, or I grab some lunch, now he's out nourishing up for the second leg of today's doubleheader. And despite temperatures in the low 60s, it is a beautiful day. I wore jeans and the WCBN Sports pullover and a little warm in this clothing. I thought about going down to shorts Last year it was in the high 70s to low 80s, a little bit colder this weekend, but doesn't feel it at all. A little bit of wind. It was more pronounced early on in game number one. So regardless, Michigan will go up to bat. It'll be Hoganrod, Thais Gonzalez, and Natalia Rodriguez. The only changes in the batting order compared to game number one is Madison Uden starting in place of Taylor Bump at third base. Gonzalez stays in as the starting right fielder for this Michigan team. 
and the batting order shuffled around a bit. Gonzalez was in the two hole in game number one. She's been bumped down to the eight spot. Hoganrod will lead things off. Hoganrod, Thais, and then Natalia Rodriguez. First pitch is a called strike from Mac Leonard. Hoganrod had a nice game in the morning session. She went three for three, as a matter of fact, with two singles and a double. 0-1 on the way, off-speed pitch fouls it back. Michigan faithful, mostly all stuck around here for game number two. A couple Illinois State fans, not many though, as Hoganrod takes that one up high. Leonard steps back on and a commanding one, two count. Haley takes it down. And in, we also want to say hello to any viewers listening to this game on 88.3 WCBN FM Ann Arbor. We'll have one more game on the airwaves on Sunday on 88.3. Every other game, including this one, will always be on YouTube.com backslash WCBN Sports. Three and two the count on Haley Hoganrod, which is... Her jersey number, wearing number 32, three and two, the count. Hogan Rada, senior leader of this team. Her 3-2 is fouled off down the left field line. Our score, Michigan one, Illinois State nothing here in the top of the second. One run on two hits for Michigan in that top of the first. They stranded two runners on what seemed like could have been an RBI single for Jimenez, but was snatched out of the air on a line drive by the pitcher, Leonard, heads up defense. 3-2 coming off speed, and Hoganrod just gets a piece. Saw a couple really nice long at-bats, patient hitting from the Michigan team in game number one. Hoganrod stands in there, waits for the 3-2 again. That one off speed, she hits it over to short. Glove, they're gonna have to be a quick throw in just making the play. Moffitt at short to get the out. Haley pretty quick down the line but wasn't quite able to beat that one out and one out in the inning will bring up Thais. Thais Gonzalez started game number one. Only got a couple at bats though. She was removed in favor of the pinch hitter Uden. She swings and misses there on the first pitch. A lot of questions about Thais Gonzalez, what her role would be on the team as through this point in her Michigan career has never been able to be a consistent starter, but this is the second time in three years she's been able to start the season as a starter and she hits that one through the hole on the right side and it goes under the glove of the right fielder, Boris, and rolls all the way to the wall. Thais will head over to third. That'll be a single and a two bag error as the right fielder, Boris, just lifted the glove up a little too quickly, and it rolled under the glove and all the way to the wall. So Michigan now with the runner on third, getting a bit of a gift right there. One of the most classic but costly errors you can make. And now Illinois State will be in run pre pre prevention mode. They'll draw the infield in severely. Third baseman, Corsi especially, right up on Natalia Rodriguez. Shows bunt, potential squeeze situation. She pulls it back and takes strike one. Here in the top of the second, one nothing Michigan looking to double their lead with a runner on third and one out. And Rodriguez takes that one in the dirt, it's gonna get away and they won't even need a swing to get that run home. Gonzalez will score on the wild pitch as Leonard spiked that one to the dirt. No chance to trap it for Boris. And it's now 2 nothing Wolverines on top. A pretty ugly sequence of defense there from the error and then the wild pitch. 2 nothing Michigan on top, and now the base is empty. Natalia 
slaps that one foul. In response to the earlier discussion of Thais Gonzalez, one of the factors you potentially think about with her role with this team is her nature as a slap hitting outfielder, which is trying to replace Natalie Peters. A wind up from Leonard, and that one is just poked in the air by Natalia into the glove of the shortstop Moffitt, two outs. With Natalie Peters leaving, Natalia is really the only slap hitter expected to be in the lineup, and so Thais Gonzalez gives Michigan that second slapper, and that may be an insight into why she's starting this season in the outfield, though Michigan has some really highly touted freshmen, and we saw Overitis play in the outfield as well in game number one. They have a lot of different lineup combos they can play with. So there's a strike to Lexi Blair. Leonard winds up. The pitch is up high, one and one. Lexi walked back in the first. She came around to score a run. Was one for three with the hit by pitch in the first game against Georgia State. 1-1 one, one coming. She swings, fouls this one back right at us, and it bounces off the concrete beam about 15 feet to my right and then bounces back into the field of play, rolling down the netting like a slip and slide. Now a one and two count. The wind up, the one, two, high and outside, two and two. Blair steps out of the batter's box. She hit 406 a year ago, the first freshman in the last 20 years for Michigan to hit 400 in her rookie campaign with the Wolverines trying to follow that up. We talked to her on media day and asked her if she was feeling any pressure on herself to follow up that incredible freshman season, and she said yes. She said that she's been working on ways to get better, but it's a high bar to improve on. Another foul back to the screen, keeps it at two and two. Always love honesty from athletes, and that was about as honest as it can get. Now a leader for this team in her second season. The wind up in the pitch, we just sweeps this one over to second base. Quick throw there by Olsen, gets the out. So a 4-3 put out, ends the second, but Michigan gets a run thanks to an error and a wild pitch after a Thais Gonzalez single, and we will head to the top of or sorry, the bottom of the second. Michigan on top, 2-0. Bobian comes back out for her second inning of work. And now we welcome back onto the broadcast, Charlie Brigham. How was lunch? It was good. Needed. Much needed. <laughs> that was your first food all day. You didn't get breakfast. I know. I just had a coffee for breakfast. <laughs> is isn't too substantial, but I guess it got the job done for a while. So Bobian goes back out there now for her second inning of work, now with a two-run advantage. Very strong first frame pair of strikeouts and a one, two, three first. And Bobian is, you know, probably the most important player on the team. You'd say either her or Lexi Blair, but it starts and ends with Megan Bobian. We expect to see her starting against Florida tomorrow, and this is a tune-up, really. Yeah, for sure. We saw her warming up earlier in that first game. Uh, good to see her here today. Michigan fans, obviously, anytime Megan Bobian walks onto the field, it's going to be fun. So it'll be 4, 5, and 6. Alyssa Weeble will lead things off, then Corsi and then Kennedy for this Illinois State squad. Bobian completes her warm-ups. And now Weeble stands in there. Very wide stance, gets very low with the body. And she swings and crunches this one. It is deep and it is gone. Alyssa Weeble hits one out and it's two to one. That was just, she just tanked that ball. That one was a no doubter. Bet Bobian left that one right down the middle and she punished her for it. Yeah, mistake made right there. 
Weeble a year ago, a 368 hitter, one of the better hitters on the team, and she led the team with six home runs. Really showing off that power there here early. Michigan now has surrendered two runs on the season in both of the solo home run variety. That one really well hit. You can see that wide stance getting low and able to really turbocharge that one over the left center field fence. There's a pitch down and away to Corsi, and this is where the best pitchers are able to just shake these off and get back to work. Yeah, Bobian, as we know, is one of those great pitchers. Obviously a little annoyed about that one, but won't affect her play too much. Puts the ball in the glove, the wind up in the 1-0. That pitch up a little high, 2-0. And, oh, and you, know, you always wonder about the long off season and how times you might have a little jitters when the season gets started, working back into real competitive hitting. And that's why it's good to have a couple games to warm up before you play a team like Florida tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. These are really, in every essence, tune-up games. Uh, the one everybody really cares about is Florida tomorrow. That's the one the fans are going to come out to see. We got to get these ones done first. It's a called strike. Two and one. Dana Kennedy on deck for Illinois State. There's a check swing and one around. Two and two. Of course, he didn't really look like she knew what she wanted to do on that one. Usually a check swing is last second pull back, and that one she just kind of threw her hands out at the ball. Bobby now counts tied up 2-2. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Went with the change up there, off speed, and an off balance swing from Corsi. Three strikeouts now for Megan. Yeah, very, very similar to that second strike. She just kind of threw her hands at it and hoped something would happen. Now one out in the inning. Dana Kennedy strides up to the plate. Bobian winds up. That first pitch high. Carson with a kind of awkward throwback to Bobian there. Bobian seemed to trip over the mound or something. Carson calls timeout. Go calm her down. Michigan fans seem to have moved around a little bit. They were all packed together in one little cluster on the right-hand side of the dugout. They've spread out a bit, but they're all still in attendance. 1-0 and the count. Bobian puts the ball in the glove. The wind-up, the pitch. Little down and in, 2-0. and That's a good miss, though. That's right at the bottom of the zone where she'll be wanting to pound all game. Just honing that in. Bobian checking her wristband, looking to deliver this 2-0 pitch. Well, wind up, and the offering is a little outside, 3-0. Tight zone right now. A much tighter strike zone this game than last. You know, both teams saw early in that last game against Georgia State that the strike zone was going to be a little bigger, and they had to adjust to that. Just the opposite in this game. Strike zone seems really tight. 3-0. There's a called strike. That one looked very similar to that last pitch. Just shows you how much, in fact, that strike zone is closed. With 3-1 here, Bobian's going to have to come right at the hitter. The wind up, the pitch, swinging a foul back. 3-2. and two. Count runs full. Bobian touched. Close to 70 on that pitch. We haven't seen her quite climb up as high as she can get yet in this one. Spins the ball in the left hand, puts it in the glove, the wind up, the 3 2, swing in a decently hit ball, but it goes well foul and into the Michigan dugout. Yeah, hard hit ball there, but stayed on the ground mostly. Now they'll do the full count. Again. The wind up, the pitch, off speed, got her looking. 
That's the iconic changeup from Bobian that everybody loves to see. You know, we were saying she's touching 70, throwing gas, and then comes in with that changeup, just shakes hitters up. They're reading 53 right there. And now that brings up Annie Boris. Bobian takes a quick sigh and then it's ready to attack this next hitter. First pitch called strike. And that one does, in fact, hit 70. Obi not looking rattled at all after giving up that home run. Oh, one one on the way. That one is well hit, but right at the shortstop in Menez, who makes the play, or rather over rightus right there, makes the play, and we will go to the top of the third, Illinois State gets one back, 2-1, Michigan on top. Yeah, suns came out and started shining. Weather's looking beautiful here in Tampa as Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus <laughs> plays in the background. It's been a great day so far for Michigan softball and just in general. Sun's shining, Michigan got a win. I'd love to see it. Uh, Leonard goes back out there for third inning of work. Michigan has notched to run in each of these first two innings and we'll look to put a few more on the scoreboard as the wind is now picked up a little bit to our back. The flag not waving too much out there. We're probably blocking most of it. Yep. We're two rather large human beings, you know. Uh, been hitting the gym too much. <laughs> USF players, baseball players, are out doing batting practice behind us, and one of the coaches has got a whistle back there that's been sounding every so often. As USF and Fresno State softball are out in the outfield beyond the fence, warming up. USF's taking batting practice right now, and Fresno State just arrived a few minutes ago. They're just doing stretches. Michigan will see USF tomorrow after the Florida game and Fresno State early Sunday morning. Uden gets ready to stand in now for the Wolverines. It'll be 2-3-4. Uden, Allen, and Overitis. Uden singled her last time up. She lets that first one go by. That strike hitting the outside corner. It's Mac Leonard jumps ahead in the count. 0-1. Leonard checks the wristband. Puts the ball in the glove of the windup. The 0-1 swinging a foul back 0-2. That one just piled down into the dirt by Uden. Good hard swing there, but again, down even lower in the count, 0-2. Leonard looks into the dugout, takes some signals. See how they want to attack Uden here. The windup of the 0-2 high. Uden's been strikeout prone at times in her career, but also draws a decent amount of walks. An aggressive swinger. Steps out, takes one practice swing, gets back in a half swing, and then ready for the one-two offering. That one down and away, two and two. Yeah, as you said, Alex, known to be able to work a walk, 381 on base percentage last year. Looking to bump that stat up as much as she can this year as the count is even, two-two. As Mac Leonard checks her wristband. 2-2 on the way, swing and a miss, but that one's gonna get back to the screen and reaching first will be Uden. She will go aboard on a strikeout. Borey's unable to handle that one behind the plate, roll up and off her arm and all the way to the back fence. Uden able to capitalize on the mistake from the catcher there. It's gonna be Lou Allen stepping to the plate now with a runner on. Yeah, Lou, Lou stands in there, hit a two run shot against Georgia State this morning. And she <laughs> is swinging for the fences again. Foul tips it into the glove for strike one. Yeah, it's a real hard swing there from Allen. Not wasting anything. Uden down there at first. Nobody out in this top of the third. 2-1 Michigan on top. Lou swings again and pounds it right into the plate. Looked like that one might have come back up and hit her. 
Yep, she steps out of the batter's box. Uden now taking an aggressive lead at first base. Looking to capitalize on any mistake that Illinois State might make. This pitch outside for ball one. High and away. The scoreboard operator is right on it. Yeah, real quick. <laughs> Pretty much the moment it hits the glove, a digit is being put up on the scoreboard. One, two, swing in another foul back. Lou's been off balance this at bat, but is staying alive. Well, and stepping back into the box now, taking a couple practice swings. Mac Leonard checking her wristband one more time before delivering this one. Here's the one, two. Swinging a slow roller over to third. They'll throw for one out and across. And no, they say they did not get Uden at second. And it'll go down, I think, as a fielder's choice, maybe with an error or an infield single. Regardless, Michigan now has two aboard and nobody out because that throw over to second did not, they didn't keep a foot on the bag and you didn't get a neighborhood call over there at yeah. second. Yeah, Matty Uden slid hard into second base looking to break up that double play. But that slide might have just intimidated the second baseman as she ducked out of the way quick to avoid the contact on the slide and just missed the bag entirely. It's gonna be an interesting scoring decision here. It, it was very, very clear, at least from my angle, that the shortstop Moffitt was nowhere close to the bag when she caught that ball. But a lot of times when you're trying to turn a double play, you'll get the out anyway. But that time, didn't get it. Now two runners on and nobody out. And there's a swing and a bat that goes flying. They'll throw over for one out. It'll be a fielder's choice as Morgan Overright is. That's going to be a broken bat. She broke bat. a bat. <laughs> I've never seen that before. I have never seen a metal bat get broken. Lord almighty. I thought she just threw it, but then she dropped the handle. Yeah, she held onto the handle and the upper shaft went flying over the first baseman's head. The throw was made to second for the out, so now runners on the corners and one out, but There's holy still a cow. chunk of that bat sitting on the first baseline. Somebody somebody might want to pick that up. I don't know if they know it's there. It fell out of the handle as it got picked up. Wow. But a few steps down the first baseline, there's just a chunk of bat sitting there. And that was a loud sound, too, when that bat broke. It sounded like a gunshot. I, I've seen plenty of wooden bats break, but I don't think I've ever seen probably a composite bat that probably was. I've never seen one break. Hannah Carson at the plate. She takes the ball a little high. 1-0. Runners on the corners. One out. 2-1. to one. Michigan on top. Carson can put some more on the scoreboard. Carson, lefty hitter against the righty, Mac Leonard. The wind up, the 1 0, swing and a foul. A little out in front of it. I'd say more than a little on that one as Carson fouls it back right by the on deck circle. Carson steps back in with one runner on scoring position, one sitting over there at first base. It's one out here and a 1 1 count. Mac Leonard takes a deep breath, delivers the 1-1. One, one. This one oh. just outside, misses yeah. the corner. Down and away again, this tight strike zone from home plate umpire Tom Meyer. Two and one count. Leonard checks the wristband, winds up in the pitch. That one in the dirt, nice block. They'll throw over on Uden. Overitis will go on down to second, and now two runners in scoring position and a 3-1 hitter's count for Carson. Yeah, you love to see this situation if you're Michigan. That ball in the dirt allows Overitis to get over to second base. Good heads-up base running there. Able to capitalize on the mistake, and Carson can do some real damage if she gets her pitch. 3-1 count. That one way high. It's going to go over the head of the catcher. They're going to throw over. Safe! What Uden a slide. Just got her foot in there before Leonard could apply the tag. A wild pitch brings a run home. Three to one. Carson goes down to first. Overitis moves up to third. It's a little bit of an awkward exchange there. Catcher didn't really, it's like she didn't expect Uden to take home. And then once she actually did turn around, had a quick throw, a little awkward. Looked like she was almost throwing darts. Throwing that ball towards home plate to try to get Uden. Nice slide though, able to sneak under that one. 
in this Michigan inning. They're yet to get a hit. A strikeout reach base. Fielder's choice, everybody safe. Fielder's choice, runners on the corners. Wild pitch moves up. Wild pitch scores a run off a walk. So Michigan doing the dirty work right now. Taking advantage of some poor defense. Yeah, you gotta take everything you can get, every run you're gonna need to capitalize on. Michigan up to a 3-1 lead with only one out here in the third inning. Two runners aboard, conversation in the circle, and the whole defense will talk with Leonard. And it will be Jimenez in the batter's box. She smoked a ball right back at Leonard and who grabbed it out of the air to end the first inning. Yeah, those ones are always scary no matter what. Whether you're playing baseball, softball, whatever, if you're a pitcher and a ball comes right back at you, you're going to think about that one again. Here's the 0-0. This one hit on a line towards right field. What a catch from the right fielder. And they don't quite double off Carson, but a run will score from third on a sacrifice fly, they call it. Boy, oh boy. Jimenez has hit two balls about as hard and as... <laughs> As hard as you can hit him, and she still has no hits to show for it, but she'll pick up an RBI there. Yeah, she got every piece of that one. What a catch, though, by the right fielder. On the run, over her shoulder, almost got uh, Carson doubled up at first base. And it a heads-up a... job by Overitis to stay yeah. at third and, and tag up easily there. Exactly. Haley Hoganrod takes a ball. Runner still on first is Carson. Run in, four to one, Michigan. They've scratched two across in this frame, one in the first, one in the second, now two in the third. You know, we've seen Michigan capitalize on every little mistake all day. Their base running has been fantastic so far. 1-0, Hoganrod takes a ball low, two and oh. Same pitch there from Mac Leonard, coming back to that same spot, trying to work that inside corner. Like we said earlier, tight strike zone, she's not getting any calls. Checks the wristband, 2-0 count, pretty friendly situation here for Haley. The pitch swing and a miss, dropped out of the glove of Boris, but able to get right back on it, keep Carson at first. Four runs on three hits for Michigan. One run on one hit and an error by Illinois State. Two one, pitch high, three and one. Leonard's command wavering right now, she is now at 59 pitches. Yeah, 59 through not even three innings just shows you how well Michigan has been able to work the count so far. They've been persistent. The wind up, the 3-1 called strike. That's really been the name of the game though so far for the Michigan Wolverines, working at bats, making pitchers throw extra pitches until they get the one they want and then they've been capitalizing on that. Hoganrod stepping in. Runner's probably gonna go with a full count here and two outs. Here's the pitch. Hard down the line, but it's gonna go right to the first baseman. Strand guard. And that's gonna retire the side. Well, Michigan gets two and it's four to one. And we will go to the bottom of the third. Megan Bobian look to go back out there and Michigan starting to build an early lead better than they did against Georgia State. Navy. Quick look around NCAA softball. Louisville, who Michigan will see twice next weekend in Chapel Hill, beat a top 25 Ole Miss team in their first game and is up two to one on Baylor in the third inning currently. And UNC got two runs on one hit versus Bama earlier. We'll be playing Florida State in about 20 minutes. Those two teams Michigan will face down in Chapel Hill, North Carolina next weekend in the Big Ten ACC softball challenge. Once again, want to thank you for joining us here on WCBN Sports and 88.3 WCBN FM Ann Arbor. Someone in our comments says, ESPN top 10 play worthy when you break a metal bat. I <laughs> could agree with that. And another commenter says that when you have a handle that's too thin, sometimes you can break a metal bat. Yeah, that bat, that ball did get hit right on the handle. There's still pieces of it sitting down there on the field. Somebody should probably pick those up eventually. One thing I want to highlight, I was going back through the comments of last game. We had a listener from Germany, it said, in the comments. 
Four to one, Michigan on top over Illinois State. Now it's three to one, Louisville over Baylor in the top of the third. And Boris in the batter's box. It's ready to get going. Bobian's first pitch is a called strike on the outer edge. 0-1 continues to be a very soft wind at our back. Temperature in Tampa, 63 degrees. Feels like 61. Sun is shining all over the field, though. 0-1 pitch is a ball a little outside, 1-1. One one. Yeah, Bobian just missed her spot there but pounding the glove of Carson. Here she is checking the wristband, set for the 1-1 pitch. The wind up, and that one fouled back on a check swing. Collapsing in the batter's box was Boris there. Now stands back up in a 1-2 count. <clears throat> As I mentioned in last inning, Bobian has added this pink bandana to her uniform. Definitely an interesting look. One, two on the way is a little outside. Definitely adds a nice color contrast to the maize and blue uniform. Yeah, throw a little extra splash of color in there. I like it. And of course, the patented sunglasses. She holds the ball in her left hand. Two, two count, the number eight hitter. And the wind up and that pitch is up high. It glances off the glove of Carson to the backstop and she picks it up and fires it back. Count runs full now. Yeah, Carson seemed to have a little bit more trouble handling Bobian than she did last game. She don't think she had any pass balls last game. She's had a couple so far. Yeah, Straco got a little wild early in the first game, but that was it. 3-2 coming, that's a hard hit ball to left field and that one is gone, another home run for Illinois State. Katie Boris hits one out to left field. Illinois State kind of tune, tuning her up right here as Bobian has just been leaving the ball right over the middle of the plate. Yep, she's not gonna be happy with herself about that one in a 3-2 count, had to put it where the hitter could get it and Boris went down and got it. And now that'll bring up Kaylee Cheval, Chevelle rather. It's a K-A-I-L-I-C-H-V-A-L. Kaylee Chevelle. So two home runs for Illinois State in this game. Also their only two hits of the contest thus far. Chevelle takes first pitch a little low. Bobby invisibly frustrated with herself after that one. Like we said, last inning she gave up that home run and bounced back and pitched very well the rest of the inning. Going to look to do that again here with no outs. She's set to, to deliver the 1-0, this pitch. Yeah, a little high. That one looked good from up here at the broadcast table, but apparently not from behind the plate. Obi and setting back up for the 2-0, this one. That right down finds the, the zone, yeah, two and one. Coming back and able to find her spot. That pitch was about as good as one you're gonna get. Two and one the count. Bobian readies and throws a pitch, finding the outside edge, two and two. Yeah, the players down here on the field are getting a little bit of a soundtrack playing through through the speakers as the baseball theme continues practice. Two and two the count. 68 miles an hour on that last pitch. Sets the wind up. That one down in the dirt. Three and two now. Count runs full. This was the spot she was in when Boris was able to hit one out. Here's the 3 0 set to come with no outs here. Full count offering on the way. A little low. 
That tight zone squeezing Bowie in right now and she puts a base runner aboard first walk of the game. Mac Leonard, the pitcher, will come back up with the runner aboard and nobody out here in the third. Uden playing in at the line at third. Allen a couple steps in at first. Uden continues to creep forward. There's a swing and a miss from Leonard, chased it up high. That was the range of pitch that Sturaco went to a lot in the morning game. Yeah, she got Georgia State to chase that high pitch all game long, and it proved really effective, bringing her to 16 strikeouts, a new career high, topping her previous of 15. 0-1 oh, count. Wind up that pitch, fouled back again. Leonard chases it. Yeah, as you said, corners playing up right now. Uden and Lou Allen a couple steps closer. And you got Nat Rodden over right is playing back, looking to turn two here. Bobby in complete control, 0-2. Oh, Puts the ball in the glove, the wind up, the pitch off speed and a little high. She steps off the rubber and gets back on. One and two the count. Wind up, the one two swing and a miss. Pulled the string with the change up and gets strikeout number five and one out in the third. Leonard way ahead of that one. It's now second strikeout of the game for Leonard. And that'll bring up Rebecca Moffitt, hit one pretty hard to right, as now the wind comes in a lot stronger than it had been previously. That could help the hitters as it continues to blow out towards the outfield. Nice stop in the dirt by Carson. Something that was on our interview with Megan Bobian, featured on East of the Rockies, which is our softball podcast, episode one of this fourth season. Megan talked about how her and Hannah Carson played travel ball together. They won a national championship. So there is a, some familiarity there, but that one gets away from Carson to the backstop. Runner will move up to second. And now a 2-0 count on Moffitt. Go down as a wild pitch. Seeming a little sloppy here so far. It seems like something you might have seen in that first game against Georgia State, you know, first game of the year. But they played really clean softball that whole first game. Just a little sloppy here starting against Illinois State. Yeah, Jen Brundage is going to go out and talk to Megan Bobian and sort of work something out. And these are the kinds of things you want to work out. Here in a game, it's a team that had a losing record a year ago from the Missouri Valley Conference, Illinois State. At both of Illinois State's runs have come off of home runs. Two solo shots, one in the second, one here in the third. I mean, if you're Illinois State, that's about as good as you're going to get conditions-wise. You got Megan Bobby in throwing gas, already lending itself to farther hit, plus all the wind is blowing out towards the outfield. Really, any well-hit ball has a chance to go out. 2-0 on the way, just a little outside. Now the count runs to 3-0. Uden and Allen, a couple steps in at first and third. The wind up, and the 3-0 is right down the middle, three and one. Four to two, Michigan on top. Bobian surrendered just two hits. They're both solo homers though. One walk, that's the runner on second. Nice pitch there by Bobby and to keep herself in the count. Going to have to come back right back with that fastball, though. And that one is lined into right field. It's going to drop, and Thais Gonzalez has trouble with it. Run will score, and it is four to three. That'll be a single. Not sure if they'll give her the RBI. There was going to be a play at the plate until it popped out of Gonzalez's glove. Honestly, there might not even have been a play. If she comes up clean with that ball, she might get held up at third. But the misplay of that ball popping out of her glove allows the run to score. Illinois State 
puts up their second run of the inning. This is a one-run ball game. Yep. Just like Georgia State hanging around for a while in game number one. Illinois State is battling right now. Still only one out in the inning. Off speed called strike. And a Carson fires it back. Owen won the count. That one upstairs, but check swing one around, Owen two. One runner on, if we can, Michigan can turn a double play here, that'd be huge, get Bo being out with having, without her having to throw any extra pitches. Ahead in the count, Owen two. That one up high again, but laying off was Olsen. One and two the count. Bobian checks the wristband. Shakes off a couple from Carson. And now time is called. Bobian really looking for a specific pitch there. Shook off three signs before the batter eventually called time. Now the wind up, the one, two. Oh, just getting a piece on that changeup. One and two the count. Honestly, might be a good thing she caught a piece of that one. The runner was going, and it looked like it was going to be an awkward play for Carson to be able to block that one in the dirt and come up throwing. And that one just 49 miles an hour. Bobian really taking a lot off of that pitch. Wind up, one, two again. That one up high, two and two. It's a long at bat right now. Bobian at 49 pitches. This one will be number 50 here in the bottom of the third. We've seen her go well past 150 in her longest outings, but Michigan wouldn't like to have to have her go that deep into a game. Two and two. That one is, man. Just misses the outside. Yeah, a little outside or a little high. Not sure exactly where it missed, but now the count runs full. Three balls and two strikes. Bobian showing off her range. There was a 20 mile an hour difference between that pitch and the last. And that's when she's at her best is when she's mixing those speeds. 3-2. Oh, and right and down the middle. Throw, that throw down to second is not in time. I guess they called a ball. So now two runners aboard. They're going to call that one a walk. That one looked good. Looked like it was right down the middle. Yeah, this zone is very tight right now. And Illinois State is taking advantage of it. A really good at-bat from Olsen to fight from 0-2 down. To draw a walk now, two runners aboard in a four to three game. And Megan Bobian just does not look like herself right now. The first pitch to Alyssa Weeble is a strike. Weeble hit a home run last inning. So far this frame, it's a home run, a walk, strikeout, single, and then a walk. Two runs in in the third. Michigan added two in the top of the third. 0-1 is high, 1-1. One one. Yeah, Bobby not looking like her usual self here so far. But then again, it is her first outing of the year. She's got to shake off the rust like both teams did in that first game. Trying to look to bounce back for her appearance most likely tomorrow. 1-1, one, one. change up, called strike. Way off the bag at second is Moffitt. Now Bobby and able to find the zone there, 1-2. Olsen as well on first, both runners getting big leads. The Illinois bench is hyped up as they start cheering. It's Bowman to set for the one, two. This pitch swung Swing on, in. grounded. They're gonna try to turn two, relay one over to first and they throw it into the dugout and the run will score. It'll be a four to four game. And the Redbirds have tied it up. As Overitis Air mills that throw way over Allen's head. It lands into the dugout. And now a team meeting in the circle as a runner on second. Weeble able to beat it out at first and then move up to second on the error. Got to give some credit 
on that to Olsen. Hard slide into second, trying to break up that double play. Forces the rush throw, which again, like you said, sails into the Michigan dugout. That'll be an E4. Three runs here in the bottom of the third have tied the game at 4-4. Four four. And you know, this right here is more or less what Carol Hutchins was talking about at media day as the first pitch is down and away to Corsi where Hutchins basically said that she liked the way her hitters were performing in practice but was frustrated with the pitchers. And Starocko pretty solid in game number one, but Bovian's run into some issues here and is gonna have to work through it in a tie game. 1-0 pitch is a called strike, one and one. That Bovian feeling a little shook up, decides to go to that change up her go-to able to bring herself back to an even count here, 1-1. One, one. But again, the lead runner is on second base right now. Wind up in the 1-1, one, one, fouled back 1-2. One and two. Now one strike away from getting out of this inning. Chandler Dennis is down there in the bullpen warming up. Be quite a turn of events if Dennis has to come into this game because Bobian isn't pitching well as opposed to the expectation which was to come in in the game comfortably in hand. The wind up, the one, two, a little high. Illinois State being real aggressive on the base pass, especially on second base, getting big leads after each pitch. Almost taunting Carson, trying to get her to throw down. The wind up. The 2-2 two -two off speed, called strike three. A long, long wait for Tom Meyer to then finally ring her up. Corsi is down on strikes, but Illinois State gets three runs in that bottom of the third, and we are tied at four, headed to the top of the fourth between Michigan and Illinois State. You're listening to Michigan Softball on 88.3 WCBN FM Ann Arbor. Yeah, Bobian really would like that one back. Not very often you see her give up three runs in one inning. Michigan going to look to put up some more runs here. Going to need to build themselves back up a safety net. But impressive outing so far for Illinois State. Yeah, just like Georgia State this morning, a smaller team being scrappy, hanging around. Illinois State team, 257 average as a team in their overall season a year ago, but 301 in Missouri Valley Conference play. Not a bad hitting team if you make mistakes, and Bobby and the Michigan defense just haven't been crisp enough so far in this game, and the Michigan Bats will look to get going against Mack Leonard here in the top of the fourth. They already have four runs, some of it off of sloppy defense, from Illinois State, but they have to get the lead back here as Thais Gonzalez gets ready to stand in. Yeah, Gonzalez is going to be first up. Nat Rod sitting over there in the on-deck circle. And it is quite jarring how this game has turned. Michigan had gotten two runs to go up 4-1 to one in the top of the third. And now things have gotten a lot more interesting in a tie ball game here in the top of the fourth. Gonzalez, the lefty senior, sporting number 22, is going to step into the box here against Mac Leonard. Michigan, like I said before, going to need to put up at least one run here. First pitch, high, 1-0. Gonzalez is one for one. She singled and then scored a run back in the second. She went all the way to third on a two-bag error. And the right fielder, Boris, lifted the glove up and rolled under it. Thais takes that pitch high, 2-0. Mac Leonard a year ago was a very good hitter, 300 hitter on the season, but ERA was over seven has clearly made some strides here in the offseason. Yeah, definitely. Strong bat, but ERA over seven is 
obviously problematic. But to come out here as a starter in this game, obviously has, must have shown some improvement. That pitch. It's high and outside now, 3-0. and oh. The wind up and a called strike. One thing to note about this Illinois State team is that they beat USF yesterday. Michigan came in expecting USF to kind of be the, the second team to watch out for after Florida, but Illinois State giving them some trouble right now as there's a swing and a miss, three and two, and Illinois State knocked off USF yesterday, and Georgina Korik, who is an excellent pitcher for USF, was tagged with seven runs yesterday. This is a Redbirds team that is firing on all cylinders. That one is clobbered to center, and it will be gloved on the run. What a play by Alyssa Weevil to save two, maybe three bases there. Illinois State's outfield has been phenomenal so far. That's the second time this game we've seen a ball hit deep in a gap or over an outfielder's head. We're on the run. They made an outstanding catch. Now one out in the inning. A really nice piece of hitting, and we've seen this defense today for Illinois State. They've made some mistakes, but they've also made some really, really great plays. There's a call strike. Rodriguez batting left, left-handed right now. She settles back into the box as Mac Leonard looks over towards her dugout and checks her wristband. Set to deliver the 0-1 pitch. 0-1 swinging a slapper right back up the middle. Really solid piece of hitting from Rodriguez and she is aboard with one out. Yeah, that's just fundamental right there. Able to get on base, love to see that as Lexi Blair comes up. Lexi stands up there with a runner on first. And the runner is off, quick throw down. Rodriguez is out. Or no, is, I guess she's safe. The umpire made a motion. I believe it's an obstruction call. Gotcha. Yep. He threw his hand up like he had called her out, and I was yep. about to say that seemed very early. Yeah, she was pretty clearly safe to us, but an obstruction call has been made. Obstruction with that arm in the air, very similar to an out call. Blair takes a called strike 0 and 2. Go ahead, run on second, one out. You heard some boos from the crowd as they thought he got, uh, Rodriguez got called out early. Alexi Blair down in a hole, 0-2. Chance to fight back and put Michigan back on top. 0-2 pitch, nubbed foul down the first base side. Good job by Alexi Blair to waste that one. That pitch, would it clip the outside corner most likely for a called strike three? Nothing she could really do with that one besides fight it off and live to fight another day. 0-2 count, ball in the glove, the wind up, and that one is sky high in the air to center field. Weeble backing up, makes the catch. Rodriguez will stay at second, and now it'll be up to senior Matty Uden to try and put Michigan back on top. Rodriguez looked like she might try and tag up for a second. That ball stayed in the air for a long time. Didn't quite get deep enough, though, to allow for Rodriguez to tag. Uden's going to look to do anything she can to get Michigan on the board this inning with a runner in scoring position. First pitch is a little inside. Rodriguez continues to really take wide leads off that second base bag. And Michigan's been real aggressive on the base pass all day. You can almost, it's almost a sure thing that if a ball does squeak by the catcher even a little bit, Rodriguez will be taken third. 1-0, that one down in the dirt. Rodriguez all the way, I mean she was halfway between Second and third there before Boris threw the ball back to the pitcher, Leonard, and she was not really aware of what was going on. A chance to catch Matt Rod off the base. Now 2-0 count, friendly hitters count for Matty Uden. 2-0 coming, swing and a tapper right to first base, and that will get the Redbirds out of the inning. We will go to the bottom of the fourth in a 4-4 tie. Nice piece of pitching right there by Mac Leonard. Runner in scoring position. She didn't want to give Maddie Uden, who's a solid hitter, anything to work with, really. Nothing up in the zone, nothing Uden can drive. 
gave her that low and outside fastball. You would made the mistake of trying to pull it instead of just pushing it down that third base line. Which led to the slow ground out towards first base. And this game has really turned into a battle here. And a 4-4 ball game going into the bottom of the fourth inning. So we get ready to go in the bottom of the fourth. Bobby and out there, and this is a big inning for her in terms of needing to shut this Redbird team down. Yeah, absolutely. Bobian looking to do what she's really known to do, which is just absolutely dominate teams. Hasn't seemed like the Megan Bobian we know and love so far in this game. As we know, great pitchers can overcome adversity, and she's going to look to do that here in the bottom of the fourth inning and going on in the rest of this game. She's set to start off against number one, Dana Kennedy. Kennedy 0 for 1 on the day. First pitch on the way, called strike. So again, I want to thank you for joining us on 88.3 WCBN FM Ann Arbor and on YouTube WCBN Sports as Michigan softball finds themselves in an unexpected battle with a scrappy mid-major team. Pitch high, one and one. And you look at Illinois State, Melinda Fisher, now well over 35 years into her tenure at Illinois State, one of the longest tenured coaches anywhere in the country, not just in college softball. And she's been a really good coach over the years, has gotten this Illinois State team to the tournament a number of times. And she might just have a really solid team on her hands this season. They came out in an opponent ballpark against USF last night and shocked the hosts. Didn't just beat them, beat them by a lot. And now they're battling Michigan. They were only 18 and 33 a year ago, but this looks like a totally new Illinois State team. Two and one on the way. Change up drops in a little low. Three and one, and Illinois State's got all the momentum right now. Really vocal. Yeah, absolutely. Illinois State dugout has just been full of energy. Meanwhile, a complete opposite end of the spectrum in terms of Michigan. Haven't really heard a peep out of them. Three one count. The wind up, the pitch, down and in. And that's going to be a leadoff walk to begin this bottom of the fourth inning. Now three walks on the game for Megan Bobby, and she had two in that last inning and just has not looked comfortable. And I believe we're going to have a pinch runner coming in. That looks like it's going to be number two. 22, rather. Yep. Take a look at the roster. Be number two, Kenzie Pence. That'll bring up Annie Boris, runner on first. Bovian checks the wristband. The wind up, the first pitch swing and a miss. Bovian turning up the heat on that one, blows it by Boris, 68 yeah. miles an hour. You could really tell Boris was swinging for the fences there. One home run in this game for Illinois State. Looking for another one there, all one. And a bunt is shown, that one drops in front of Bobian and it's gonna get down, everybody's gonna be safe. Bobian went diving to try to make a heroic play in the infield and catch it out of the air and it bounced over her glove. Uden and Allen all converged, it rolled past her. Now she looks shaken up. After diving into the dirt, the whole infield will come together, and now two runners on and nobody out. It is danger time now. Yeah, Illinois State, very fortunate on that one. Whenever you go to bunt, the one thing you cannot do is keep that ball up in the air. It just pretty much strands yourself and the runner. Luckily, it gets down just before Megan Bobie and gets there. Like you said, diving attempt for that one. Illinois uh, State with a lucky bounce. Yeah, and this is a... 
Really hairy situation. I have to think another bunt could be in order. Here with Katie Boris coming up. I don't know if I would bunt with Katie Boris as she, I, yeah. you know, hit that solo yeah. shot last time with two runners on. I'd let her swing. She takes a ball 1-0 again, and this is where that strike zone becomes an issue for Bobian, and she doesn't have a lot of leeway to work with. Now four runs on four hits for Illinois State, four runs on four hits for Michigan. Boris takes that one a little high, now 2-0. You're trying to nibble at the edges with a really good hitter in Boris, but you're not going to get any calls because of the way the zone is. You're going to have to beat her head on. And now Carol Hutchins comes out, and we'll have a conversation. Alex Duraco has just taken off the coat and is going to start warming up down in that bullpen. Yeah, Duraco with a really impressive performance last game against Georgia State, posted up a career high in strikeouts, 16. Might have to come in and relieve Bobby in here. Hutchins, a long conversation. It's sort of long been known that when it's Carol Hutchins out there, she's just trying to talk mentally, not mechanics. As a pivotal moment, in this game, and you go back to that bunt, you have to wonder if diving for it was the right decision for Bobian because if yeah, she absolutely. plays it straight up, they just get the out at first. Exactly. Maybe with a little more air under it, it might be the right play to dive, but that ball didn't, it stayed in the air, but didn't stay in the air for long. It didn't get too high off the ground. In retrospect, might have been the right play to just wait for it to bounce. But, you know, hindsight is always 20-20. Heat of the moment, Bobby and just trying to make a play to help her team out. Two zero coming. That one in the dirt. Great job by Carson to get down and block it. But now three and zero. Two runners on. Nobody out. And that much closer to a bases loaded. Nobody out. Jam. If I'm Michigan here, I would almost rather. Just walk. There's a called strike three and one. I'd almost just rather walk Boris and you know let her get a good swing on another ball. Make the freshman Cheval test you. Bobby and not face at all, going right at the senior. Three and one. Ball in the glove, the wind up, the pitch, swinging a foul back. Swinging for the fences again there and yeah, just big swing topped it Boris. back. Bobby and trying to fight her way back into this one. She looks over into the dugout. Jen Brundage sitting on that bucket, calling out the signs. Huge pitch here, three and two the count. Ball in the glove, the wind up, the pitch. Swinging a pop up in the infield. Overrightus calls for it. She moves over and makes the play and that is a huge, huge out. Yeah, great piece of pitching by there or there by Bobby, and to fight her way back all the way down from 3-0 to getting that out, that is huge for Michigan. Especially avoiding a dangerous hitter like Boris. We've seen what she can do, posted a solo shot there in the third inning. Stepping up to the plate now for Illinois State, it's gonna be Cheval. First pitch, swing and a miss. Kaylee Cheval is able to draw a walk. Last inning. Bobby in ahead in the count, 0-1. Two runners on, one out. There's a ball a little down and in. Michigan in run prevention mode, even if there isn't. A runner on third yet. Yeah, ground ball in the infield. Would be huge for Michigan here. Corners playing up. Nat Rod and Overright is playing back, looking to turn a double play. 1-1, one, one, bunt shown, pulls it back, and a strike called one and two. Strikeout time here. Bobian can reach into the bag and get a swing and a miss. 
Called strike there, brings it to two strikes. Bunt is pretty much off the table at this point. Looking to get that ground ball. One, two, looking to pound the bottom of the zone. The pitch. Got her looking on the outside edge. And Great a pitch. huge strikeout from Bobian comes back with two straight outs. And now one out away from wiggling out of this jam, but she's got to get past Mac Leonard first. This is the Megan Bobian that we have grown to love. Fighting her way back to two outs here with runners on. The OO set to deliver to Mac Leonard. First pitch in the dirt. Carson gets down to stop it. Runner will move up to third. And that's tough because Leonard really made no effort to get out of the way there. She lifted her arms up to allow Carson to play it, but it rolled between Leonard's legs. And Carol Hutchins out of the dugout looking around there. 1-0 the count. Bowie and peers into the dugout and checks the wristband. Runners on the corners, two outs. 1-0 pitch. Oh boy, ball, I guess low or outside maybe? I don't know, that one looked really good. Hannah Carson, known as a great defensive catcher, knows how to frame a pitch, but if she doesn't even make an effort, you have gotta think that she thought it was pretty clearly a strike. 2-0. That pitch a little high, 3-0. Bobian might be trying to play for Rebecca Moffitt here. Not sure, but she's looked off balance this whole at-bat. We'll see if she can find the zone. Nobody up in the Michigan bullpen. 3-0 on the way, comes back with a strike. You never want to fall behind in these kinds of situations. 82 pitches now on the day for Bobian. This is a dangerous situation here for Michigan. Mac Leonard, a great hitter, and Bobian's got to come right at her with a 3-1 pitch. 300 hitter a year ago, 3-1 on the way. Called strike, boy. She's really nibbling at those edges. Didn't get a call on the 2-0. Got one there on 3-1, and now the count runs full. One strike away from a heroic escape. Checking the wristband here before the 3-2 catch. Puts the ball in the glove, the windup, the 3 2, swing and a ground ball foul down the third ba first base side. It bounces off the first base coach's hand and then he tosses it over. What a play by the first base coach there. And Great reflexes. Looks like that's Mike Armitage down there at first base. He tosses it back over. 3 and 2 the count. Mac Leonard in the batter's box, a pitcher on pitcher matchup. Bobian winds up. 3-2 coming, swinging a ground ball right to first. Gloves by Allen, she taps the bag, and Megan Bobian escapes. We'll go to the fifth, tied at four. Great play by Lou Allen to stay down on that ball right there. Mac Leonard got every piece of that one, hit it hard right at her. Those ones are usually pretty tough, honestly, even if it's right at you, as hard as that ball was hit. Great job by Lou Allen handling that one cleanly. And Michigan able to put a goose egg on the board, and. We go to the fifth, tie at four. It is a battle here at the USF Softball Stadium, and that will conclude our coverage on 88.3 WCBN FM Ann Arbor. Our broadcast, of course, will continue on YouTube, but signing off here from our on-air, our big thanks to our in-studio engineer, Ross Kaufman. He's got to get down to Yost to cover hockey tonight, but if you are interested in continuing to listen to this game, you can turn us on on YouTube, WCBN Sports. We've had this one covered the rest of the way, and we'll be back at it tomorrow for two more. And then on Sunday morning, that Sunday morning game against Fresno State, we'll also be back on 88.3 WCBN FM Ann Arbor. But now Michigan, who'd really kind of been in the you know defensive position, having allowed three runs, tied the game. For a while, Illinois State had all the momentum, but now Michigan... Able to wiggle out of trouble in the bottom of the fourth. Have to wonder if they are the team now with the momentum can come back and land a couple punches here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, great defense usually leads to offense. Gets your momentum going without having to really put the bat on the ball. But that's a huge, huge defensive stop by Michigan. You know, Illinois State, they look like they were revving up. One run in the second, three in the third. They look like they were firing on all cylinders. They had runners in scoring position even. 
But Megan Bobian and the Wolverines able to fight their way back and blank them in that fourth inning. Michigan's got the hitters to do it. Here in the top of the fifth, Lou Allen leading off. Allen over Reitis, followed by Carson. And Lou hits that one foul. Way out ahead of that one. Hits it right along the fence of the Illinois State bench. Allen in this game, a line out to third. Fielder's choice, able to reach base back in the third. Takes that one low, one and one. One one count, wind up in the pitch is a little high and outside, two and one. You know, I do have to say both teams, I'm really liking both uniforms. The Illinois State's got the white tops and the gray pants, red piping, red visors. Lou swings and way out in front of that one again and she hammers it foul. Two and two the count. Michigan still in the all blue with the maize piping, maize letters, blue socks and maize visors. White socks for Illinois State. 2-2 two, two count here as Mack Leonard sets to deliver. That one low in the dirt, and Lou Allen was able to hold off in the check swing. Now the count runs full, three and two. Yeah, pretty obvious Lou didn't go on that one. They're still gonna check it down at first though, just in case. Ball in the glove, the wind up. 3-2 high and outside, Lou Allen draws a walk, and Michigan's got the leadoff runner on here in the top of the fifth, trying to reclaim the lead. Good at bat there by the We Allen. are gonna have a pinch runner for her again. It'll be Audrey LeClaire once again down there at first. Good at bat there by Allen, as I was saying. Making Mack Leonard throw pitches. She's already racking up her pitch total. It's gonna be over at us, strapping in the box. Overitis in this game. Fielder's choice back in the third. Reached base in the first. RBI. Runner LeClaire over there at first in a track stance. Overitis takes the first pitch outside and it rolls out of the glove but not far enough for LeClaire to move up. Shadow's gonna start to become a factor within the next 20 or 30 minutes as the shade has started to come in right field. Overitis takes that one down and away. Now 2-0, and oh, Leonard's command wavering a little bit right here. Kennedy popped up behind the plate there, looking over towards first base, kind of baiting LeClaire. And Leonard Arguing the signals being given in the dugout, Overitis steps out, checks back in, cocks the bat over the shoulder. She swings, pops this one up in foul ground. Can the catcher find it? No. And Dana Kennedy not able to see that one as it popped up. If she had been able to find it, she might have had a play on it as it dropped about a foot in front of the netting. Hey, Overitis catches a break. That ball stayed in the air for a long time. The first baseman. Almost made it all the way back down to catch that one behind the plate. Yeah, Strandgard knew where it was. That pitch is down and away. Three and one the count now on Overitis. That pop-up had a ton of spin on it too. It was tailing away. It wasn't gonna be an easy play if Dana Kennedy had been able to see it, but regardless, Overitis is still alive and she's ahead in the count. Three and one. The clear down there at first. The windup, the pitch swing, and a ball hit foul. Three and two. Morgan out in front of that one. Overitis steps back in. LeClaire down there at first. Three, two. And that one is outside, I think. They throw her out at second, but it's not gonna no, count. No, yes. She was out on the throw down, but the walk negates it entirely. Illinois State was excited, but there was no strike three signal given behind home plate. Yeah, the so. Michigan bench pops up yelling at her. She started walking off the field. She thought she was out. Yep. 
Well, she was pretty clearly dead in the water on the throw, but it ended up not mattering, and now we might have a pitching change as Melinda Fisher comes out of the Illinois State dugout with Michigan. Now they've got the opportunity. Illinois State had two on and nobody out in the bottom of the fourth. Now Michigan has the exact same situation after drawing a pair of walks. Hannah Carson get ready to dig in. There's a conversation in the circle, and now it looks like the pitcher who's going to be inserted just put on a glove and is standing in the top step of the dugout. That'll be Brandy LaFontaine, I think, wearing number 10. She's, or no, they're going to bring someone in from the bullpen. LaFontaine was just, she handed something to the pitching coach. Oh, it was the insert on the wristband. And instead, the pitcher will come in from the bullpen. Have to see the number. They'll put that piece of paper in the wristband. And Melinda Fisher giving a quick talk. It's like they're going to have a substitution at catcher as well. Trying to see. Have to wait and see what how it all shakes out. But just trying to get a number on that pitcher. She's standing with her shoulder to us. She'll deliver her first warm-up pitch, and we might have an opportunity to see the number. It's not listed on the front of her jersey, unfortunately. Wait to hear if there's an official announcement from the PA. It's a right-hander. They've like got it's number 29. 29 would be Morgan Day. We also have a substitution at catcher. It's going to be number 44. That is Brittany LaFontaine. Wow, so they, I believe, then have a two pairs of sisters on this team, the Borises and the LaFontaines, because Brandy LaFontaine, who grabbed the insert on the wristband, was in the dugout, and now her sister Brittany comes out as well to play catcher. Morgan Day last year was by far Illinois State's best pitcher. 3-2-6 ERA and she comes in in a stressful situation. Both teams mixing up their lineups in this big moment. Yeah, Hannah Carson's going to get a fresh pitcher here with one run in scoring position and extra runner sitting over there on first base. No outs here and two runners on as Hannah Carson steps to the plate for the Wolverines. Sitting over there in the on-deck circle is Jimenez. Yep, these are some hitters in Carson and Jimenez who have taken some good swings today. With two runners on and nobody out, Carson's not the kind of hitter you want to punt in this situation. You'd much prefer her to swing, but we'll see what Hutch decides to have her do. She is showing bunt. She's going to drop it down, and it drops just foul as an acrobatic effort from Corsi to try to grab it and foul ground comes up empty. That's exactly what I was saying earlier. When you show bunt, everybody is crashing. That's why you need to get the ball on the ground. If it stays in the air for much longer or even stays in the air fair, you're really screwing yourself. And so now stepping back on the rubber is Morgan Day. Corsi still drawn in at the line at third. Carson's not a natural bunter, and it was an awkward-looking first attempt. Now she's going to have an opportunity to swing. She'll take it outside, one and one. That outside edge has been tight all day, and Day didn't get a call there, one and one. Yeah, it's been tight for both teams. Which is what you want. Consistency is always the most important thing. It's been pretty clear in this game where it is. One and one, the count. The wind up, the pitch, swing and a miss. Carson... Got a fastball and just missed it. Carson wanted all of that one. Put everything she had into that swing, even threw herself off balance as she missed. One and two the count. At the very least, you want a productive out here. Day a year ago, it's about one strikeout per inning type pitcher. One, two count, swing and a miss. And down goes Carson. A big strikeout there from Oregon Day. Carson chases the high fastball, unable to connect. That's going to bring Jimenez up with one out. Still two runners on, though, as the freshman steps to the plate. She's hit the ball really hard twice today. Once a line out to the pitcher and once a sacrifice fly to right field. Yeah, I wouldn't even call that so much as a sacrifice fly as a, 
Really hard hit ball. Hit it over the right fielder's shoulder. First pitch, Jimenez swings and hits this one high into the sky, down the left field line, moving over and not able to make the play. Man, oh man. These Illinois State players are giving it their all. And Rebecca Moffitt, the shortstop, made a leaping effort and it popped in, in and out of her glove and then bounced off the chest of Cheval out there in left field. The two players were converging. Very fortunate is Jimenez to still be alive in this at bat. Yeah, three Illinois State players right there. Two of them, in fact, made contact with the ball, but it still falls all the way to the ground. The Go Blue champ being started in the stadium. 0-1, that one is in the dirt. LeClaire bouncing off of second and retreats 1-1. One and one. Jimenez is stepping back into the box with a 1-1 count here. Looking to make an impact with two runners on and one out. 1-1 one, one pitch, pops that one up again, but it will go foul once again. Ooh, it hits the roof over on that first base side and will go back towards the railing. That one way up in the zone. Michigan hitters chasing right now. Stepping back into the box here, she's at a disadvantage as Morgan Day leads the count 1-2. In plate protection mode now, the windup, the 1-2, she swings, hits this one well into center field, it's back, it is going to get down and bounce off the wall. One run scores, over right is being waved around third, but she'll be held. LeClaire scores and Julia Jimenez comes through with an RBI double. What a day for the freshman. Had a great game against Georgia State. Now she's coming out hot here in the second as well. That ball, about as true of a double as you're going to get. That ball in the gap gets one run to score, another run all the way over from first to third base. Michigan taking back that lead, 5-4 here in the top of the fifth. But still two runners in scoring position and only one out. This is where you want to get some extra runs because we've seen what these Illinois State hitters can do. Hoganrod stands in the batter's box, waits for the first pitch, takes it a little high. A great situation here for Michigan. They have some momentum going. One out, two runners in scoring position. They can take back this big lead. 1-0 count. Pitch called strike on the outer edge. Hogan Rod just looks at it. We've seen a really patient approach from Haley today. Had a great game against Georgia State. One one the count. There's a pitch up high and Hoganrod went around in a check swing. Again a one two count. That's the count Jimenez was in when she pounded that double to the gap. And Morgan Day prob that's sitting in the back of her mind right now, probably gonna go to a different pitch. So Hoganrod steps back in. One two on the way. A little high and outside. Illinois State Bench wanted it. But just out of the zone. That is the consistency. That's been a ball all day. It's not going to change now. Strike zone, like we said, very tight, but very consistent all day today. 2-2 two -two count. Day looks over at Oberitis on third and Menas on second. Both quick runners. Two could score if there's a single. 2-2, two -two, Haley fouls it back. Nice job fighting that one off. Michigan bench starting to get into it now. The noise from the Illinois State bench has died down a little bit. But Michigan picking up their energy. Wolverines lead 5-4 to four over the Redbirds. Two runners on and one out here in the top of the fifth. Day winds up. The pitch swinging another foul back. Long at bat brewing right now. Great Every shot. time Day just steps off the rubber. Tries to get set back up. Yeah, great job here by Haley making day throw. 2-2 two -two count. We'll do it again. The pitch off speed and Hoganrod just tapped it foul. Really nice piece of hitting as the speed fell off a cliff right there. Nice adjustment there. She, you could see she expected fastball. Early stride was way out in front. 
able to keep her calm though and fight that one off as it slowly tailed back in. Yeah, it almost seemed like slow motion there. Just getting a piece, keeps it going. 2-2 two -two one more time. That pitch fouled back to the screen. Now bordering on 10 pitches in this at bat. Great at bat here by Helgenrod. Hear a lot of noise coming from both dugouts and the crowd here. Can sense it's a big moment. 2-2, two -two, swing and a miss, and Day gets a huge strikeout. Haley needs to run it out. They throw on down to first. Bonnie Thole was calling her to keep on running, and then the throw finally made by LaFontaine. Now two outs in the inning. Day wins that epic battle, but Thais Gonzalez, a slapper, is going to try and put this ball in play. Yeah, she had a nice hit up right up the middle earlier in the game. That same hit will for sure score one, maybe two, depending on the placement. Two on and two out. Runners on second and third. First pitch to Gonzalez is a strike at the letters. Thais didn't like it. Steps slowly out of the batter's box. Having a little conversation there with the umpire asking if it was because she swung or if because it was just a called strike. Says she didn't go around, but it was called. 0-1. Oh Wind up from Day, and there's another strike. Same and pitch. Gonzalez just stares her down, and Hutch now walking all the way, coming very close. Well, she's just going to go straight up and talk, and... <laughs> Just Hutch visibly frustrated. This is the first time all game we've seen this strike zone stretch out. Yeah, and the crowd getting really antsy. 0-2 the count now, and that one up high. And Hutch looks over there. Some cheers from the crowd as that one goes by. That one was very clearly high, and you could kind of feel that the Michigan crowd wanting to taunt there and <laughs> say, is that one in the strike zone? One and two the count. The wind up the pitch and there is a check swing, went around, strike three. And wiggling out of further damage is Morgan Day, but Julia Menez comes through, puts the Wolverines back up five to four. This one has been a fun, fun game. And Michigan obviously wanted more there, but at least one run gives the pitcher uh, just a little bit of breathing room. It's Two. Obi coming back in now for the bottom of the fifth. Michigan with a lead now, five to four. One run on one hit in that fifth inning. Five runs on five hits for Michigan, four runs on four hits for Illinois State. And this is where you need Bobian to come through in what they always call a shutdown inning. You get that lead, you need to hold on to it. Yeah, cut Illinois State's momentum entirely here. Michigan clawed their way back into this one. Or back into the lead rather. Going to look to stay there as we go into the bottom of the fifth inning. Illinois State, if they need it, has three more at-bats. Northwestern lost to Utah, apparently. More scores around the country on this opening day of the softball season, 2020, Team 43 for the Wolverines locked in a tight, tight contest. Meeting in the circle, and now Bobian will go to work. She had a very comfortable first inning. Last three innings have been very bumpy. She'd love to get just a bounce back outing here in the bottom of the fifth. She'll face Rebecca Moffitt, then Emma Olson, and Alyssa Weeble. Wind up, the first pitch is a called strike. Wow, that's the same strike that was a strike to Thais Gonzalez. I guess the zone changed, but at least it's consistent. <laughs> In the batter's box, Moffitt stands at 5'6". That one was definitely very high. But they're calling it a strike now. 0-1 count. That one pounded back to the screen. 0-2, and you'd love to just get a quick strike out here. Yeah, absolutely. A quick out which is further Michigan's momentum. 0-2 oh, the count. Checks the wristband. 
Moffitt could sense that one was going to get called a strike, decided to take a hack at a high one. 0-2 oh, on the way. That one way, way high over Carson's head and to the backstop one and two. Once again, thank you for joining us on WCBN Sports' coverage of Michigan softball. One and two the count. Ball in the glove, wind up in the pitch, a little high, two and two. Bobian came out this inning with a hot start and then was throwing two just rather bad balls, both going way high. Yeah, no, neither of them really tempting the hitter Moffitt. It's one for two today, it's a single and a fly out to right. 2-2 pitch, swing and a line drive to right field, but that will land right into the glove of Thais Gonzalez. Another well-hit ball from Moffitt, but it's her second fly out to right today and a big first out here in the bottom of the fifth. Very well read there by Gonzalez in right field. Hard hit ball, like you said. She made the right play, made a good read, able to snag that one. So here's Emma Olsen, 0 for 1 today with a walk. Oh, being set to deliver the 0-0 pitch. This first one, low and in the dirt, going to be called ball one. Carson gets the glove down there. So now the shadows have continued to move across the diamond right to left. All of right field and Thais Gonzalez is shaded by the tree line. And the first base line shaded as well in the infield now as that one floats high, 2-0. and The overhang from the roof that protects those bleachers from the sun is now shaded onto that side of the diamond. The light pole cutting through the outer edge of the middle infield. 2-0 is a ball inside, 3-0. Michigan fans visibly unhappy with that one. Here's some boos from the crowd again. A very tight call right on the edge. And now Bobian behind 3-0. She fell behind 3-0 a couple times in that fourth and was able to get through it. 3-0 coming is a called strike. Will be in comfortably. Goes with just a solid fastball, 65 miles an hour, no need to blow it away. Yeah, good job by Bobby and taking a little bit off of it there. Worried less about velocity, more about location on that one. Three and one, the count's gotta be careful. The pitch is a little low and it's a walk. One out in the inning. That is now the fourth walk of the game for Bobian. Four hits and four walks allowed, seven strikeouts. Really no sign of anybody warming up. Tough pitch there. This is the smallest strike zone we've seen in a while. It widened out at the top. They're in that top of the fifth, and we're going to get a pinch runner, it appears. Looks like it'll be number four, Michelle Calabrese. We'll go on down there. Calabrese, rather, a hard Z. Seems to be wearing a cast under something on her right arm. She'll get a little bit of action out there, though. So Alyssa Weeble stands at the plate. First pitch a little down and outside. Bobia now is missed on five of the last six. The only strike was that 3-0 pitch where she just took a little off and comfortably found the zone. Straco just went over 100 in the game this morning. In theory, would have a little bit in the tank. There's a called strike one and one if Michigan needed it. They're going to need eight more outs to close this game out here in Tampa. Estoraco didn't really, she might have thrown a little over 100, but it wasn't too high stress. A lot of those strikes that she got called was just Georgia State chasing. 1-1 one, one high and a tight 2-1. and one. And now Bobian steps off 2-1, and one. Carson looking for the signs in the dugout. 
Bobian steps back on, takes the side, 2-1 coming. Off speed and down and outside, 3-1 and one now. And Carol Hutchins looking over at Jen Brundage. They're both on that top step of the, top step of the dugout. Bobian kind of jumped up after that last one. She really thought that one was a strike. She just motioned in the dugout. There's a pitch that comes right down the middle. Three and two count runs full. Looks like we might have a pitcher get ready to warm up. Hutch had turned to the side and signaled that someone, uh, two players have gotten up, grabbed gloves. They might head out there after this next pitch. Three, two, the count. The wind up, the pitch, swing and a foul back. Got the USS softball team sitting on top of the Michigan dugout over there waiting for their game after this one. We've got the USF mascot up here on the Donaldson deck with us to look up his name after a break in the action. Three and two the count. Wind up. The full count, swing and a miss. A foul tip into the glove and a huge strike three. Good squeeze there by Hannah Carson. For those of you wondering, the USF's mascot is named Rocky the Bull. Rocky the Bull, he is up here looking pretty clean. Pinstripe jersey on top, green trousers. Black shoes. It's gonna be Andrea Corsi stepping into the box now on number six for Illinois State. Runner still on first, two outs now in the inning, and Pobian comes back with a strike. Nice pitch there by Bobian, hitting the bottom right-hand corner of the zone, low and away from Corsi. How big was that strikeout over Weeble, who had tagged her for a home run earlier in the game? Still a runner on, though. Got to keep battling. 0-1. Way out in front is Corsi, and she just gets a piece. Now Bobian ahead, 0-2. Can she get out of this fifth? 18 mile an hour difference between that last fastball and that changeup we just saw. Oh, and two the count. Ball in the glove, the wind up, the pitch, swing and a foul back. Now Carson picks it up, gets ready to go back into the crouch. Bobby and now at 104 pitches, seven outs away from a victory. That pitch count will be something to watch as this game goes along. 0-2 the count, the wind up, the pitch high. Not a bad one. Thought about it for a second. Did Andrea Corsi. Anna Carson doing a good job of making the umpires check to see if she did go ahead and swing. Pobian looks over. Knows what she wants to do here. Runner still down there at first. The wind up, the pitch, swing, and a, another foul back. Just barely getting a piece. Yeah, it's three straight fastballs from Bobby, and you got to wonder when that changeup is coming. I'm sure it's sitting in the back of Corsi's mind right now. Bobian steps back into the circle, getting ready to deliver the one two. Calabrese down there at first. One and two, the count. Ball in the glove, the wind up, the pitch. Went up high again, two and two, up to 68 on that fastball. A small check swing, but did not go around. This game has been high stress the last several innings. Two and two. The pitch. And just tapped foul. There's that change up from Bobian, throwing the hitter off entirely. Corsi way out in front, just kind of sticks her bat out in a as a last ditch effort to make some kind of contact. Just poked it foul in the dugout cheering for the valiant effort on that 50 mile an hour change up. Two and two the count. Wind up the pitch. Strike three called right down the middle, and Corsi watches it go by, and Michigan gets through a stressful inning. I mean, it was only one base runner in that inning. I mean, no one got past first, but boy, every at-bat just feels like a battle right now, and that's a testament to how well this Illinois State team is playing. 
Yeah, absolutely, especially in a one-run game. Michigan just gained their lead back. They didn't want to throw it away. Going to look to advance on that, try to stretch it out to a little more than one run, but great pitching there by Megan Bobian. We will go to the top of the six, five to four Michigan on top. Once again, thank you for joining us on WCBN Sports. I'm Alex Strain, joined by Charlie Brigham here in Tampa. For all those listening, you can tell us where you're listening from. We got a few of those earlier in the broadcast. We continue to cover this weekend tournament. The USF Rawlings Invitational, the USF Softball Complex. Morgan Day goes back out there. And Natalia Rodriguez will start things off. It'll be 9-1-2 for Michigan in the sixth. They'd love to get a couple more runs on the board. Get a more comfortable lead behind Bobian. Yeah, for sure. Natrod, one for two during this game. This time up, she's going to be batting right-handed, switching it up from last time. Lexi Blair getting set over there in the on-deck circle, taking her practice cuts. As Morgan Day steps back into the circle, ready to deliver the 0-0 pitch. Wind up, that first pitch is a little low. Booked it to be at the knees, but just a tad down. Rodriguez today is one for two. Singled in the fourth, stole a base, but was stranded on second. The 1-0, chased it up high, one and one. Rodriguez with a hard swing there. Don't know how much of a quality swing it was, though, as that ball was about at her eyes. Morgan Day came in with two runners aboard and nobody out in the fourth. Gave up a double to Jimenez. That was the go-ahead run. Rodriguez shows bump, pulls it back for a strike one and two. But she ended up striking out three hitters in that fifth and was able to strand two runners in scoring position altogether. Not a bad First inning of work. Wind up, one two on the way. One strike three called. A late ring up there from the home plate umpire Tom Meyer. It's now four Ks for day. Hutch upset with that one, turning around, talking to the third base umpire. It's Terry Holt down there at third, Sally Keller at first. Motioning up towards her eyes, saying that ball was high. Pitch up high to Lexi Blair. Lexi, today a walk. 0 for 2. Blair and then Uden here in the sixth. 1 0. Lexi swings and lines this one into right field for a base hit. That one just beyond. Outstretched glove of the second baseman. Yeah, yeah, that one just squeezes by. Blair almost runs into the first baseman who is just sitting comfortably on first base, not really trying to get out of the way. Now a runner aboard with one out in the inning and Blair has that potential to steal some bases. As Uden ready to Step in, Carol Hutchins talking to the home plate umpire. Before Uden digs in. It's gonna be Morgan Day checking her wristband before this pitch. First delivery to Uden is a called strike. Nice pitch there by Day, pounding the outside corner. Low and outside, she's been living there all day. One out, one strike, one runner on here as Uden steps back into the box. 0-1, swing and a miss. Now quickly ahead, 0-2. 
You mentioned earlier in the game that Uden has been susceptible to the strikeout at times in her Michigan career and Day already with four since being inserted, looking to carve one more up. The wind up and the 0-2, that one up high. Uden check swing did not go, one and two. One, two count. Uden stands in there in that left-handed batter's box. Lexi on first. And she swings, pops this one up, arcing right at us. That and that one go foul. will bounce up onto the netting and trickle on down. Again, who needs the net? I would have caught it. <laughs> Take it away. Give me a shot. One and two the count. Have good speed on first. The pitch, swing and a miss. And Day just powers it by. Maddie Uden, two outs in the inning. Five strikeouts now for Day. It's going to be Lou Allen stepping up to the plate now. Right-handed hitter, she's had herself a day. Two-run homer back in game number one against Georgia State. Wouldn't mind a two-run homer right here. Blair still at first, could see her off, try and create a runner in scoring position situation. And there she goes, pitch up a little high, throw on down, in time! And she is gunned out at second, and that will end the top of the six, a single, but none left on the caught stealing. As LaFontaine nabs her at second, Bobian will head back out for the bottom of the sixth. LaFontaine just showing off the arm there. Lexi Blair is pretty much dead in the water. Had her by a good few steps. Megan Bobian set to come back out. Trying to, to defend her one run lead. Michigan, five runs on six hits, one error committed, six left on base. Illinois State, four runs on four hits. One error committed, four left on base. Megan Bobian's now put back-to-back -back goose eggs on the board. But neither inning has been particularly easy. You'd like just a simple one, two, three. We've got a shout-out on a plane headed to Tampa from Phoenix. That's from Ted LeClaire, who I assume is related to Audrey LeClaire. Come on by the Donaldson deck tomorrow and say hi to us if you make it on down for the games Saturday and Sunday. Looks like there is a split squad matchup going on in the baseball field. Yep. We had a visit while you were out for lunch, Drain, uh, from Maddie Uden's mother. She came up to say hi and just introduce herself. But if you are in Tampa, feel free to stop by. And here we go here in the bottom of the sixth. Illinois State down by one still. Michigan up 5-4 as Megan Bobian tries to defend her lead. Bobian spins the ball in the left hand. Well, we'll face Brittany LaFontaine. First pitch is low. LaFontaine and the Borises to come up here in the bottom of the sixth. It looks like this is going to be Dana Kennedy back in to hit. There's a ball a little low. Yeah, they reinserted Kennedy after leaving LaFontaine out there for a while. So now 2 and 0 as that pitch is a little low. It went Kennedy to Kenzie Pence as a pinch runner, then to LaFontaine now back to Kennedy. Checks the wristband as Bobian. Kennedy's going to be looking for her pitch here on 2 0. Takes that one right down the pipe for strike one, 2 and 1. Kennedy got a pitch she could drive, decided to lay off that one. That's to Michigan's advantage as Bobian gets a strike. Count 2-1 here. Megan puts the ball in the glove, the wind up, the pitch, that one a little low. 3-1 Illinois State trying to get a runner on and get some action going 
here in the sixth. Bobian just has not been able to get an easy inning. She got the first out in the fifth before putting a runner on. Put the first worked her way back into a hitter's count here, 3-1. She put the first two runners on in the fourth, 3-1 count. That one a little inside, I guess. Again, not sure where that one was. Looked good from up here in the booth. But apparently far enough away for the umpire to call it a ball. Kennedy stands at first, and now we're going to have a pitching change. Alex Duraco is going to come into this game. And Storaco, 16 strikeouts in seven innings of one run ball against Georgia State this morning, and she'll be tasked with getting the final six outs of this ball game with a runner on first. Storaco came in in some big moments last season, not the least of which the Big Ten Championship game against Minnesota. She was able to get the save in that game. She's tasked with that responsibility here in the bottom of the sixth, five to four Michigan. Mr. Rocco with an absolutely dominant performance, like you said in that first game, 16 strikeouts, just was commanding every part of the zone. Got Georgia State to chase a lot, but that was mostly due to the fact that they just needed everything they could get. Every attempt they could get to try and put a piece up on Storaco. There's a meeting in the infield. Now Bobian will exit this game, and Storaco will go to work. The line on Bobian, five innings plus, four hits, four runs, three earned. She's on the hook for the runner on first, four walks, nine strikeouts, 112 pitches, a very bumpy outing. And now Storaco goes to work, delivers the first pitch a little high. Now this is LaFontaine, so they must have just mixed around the batting order, because this was supposed to be Annie Boris' spot. The live stats had not updated this. That one also high, quick throw back by Carson. Keeps the runner at first, 2-0 the count. The scoreboard had the same thing up there as well. Yeah, not really too sure what happened there. I have to try and figure this out after the game. But right now, it's LaFontaine in the batter's box. The 2-0 on the way. That one up high. Storaco looks very uneven right now. 3-0 the count, and Newton just going over there to try and calm her down. Get her settled into this game as she looks over to the dugout. Spins the ball in the right hand. 3-0 count, the windup. The pitch, that's a called strike. Great pitch there by Sirocco, getting herself back into this one. 3-1, she's going to live to fight another day. Looks over to the dugout, checks the wristband. Waffentain in the batter's box, 3-1 on the way, swing and a miss. Nice pitch there, going to the off speed on 3-1. Yeah, down to 56 on that delivery, and Waffentain went chasing. Nice pitch there to catch LaFontaine off guard. Fontaine most likely expecting fastball when that changeup came. She didn't know what to do with it. 3-2, swing and a miss, and Storaco gets a big first strikeout. It's going to be her first of the game, 17th of the day. Yep, she's picking up where she left off after striking out six in a row to end that game earlier. Her first batter, she gets the K, and that's big with the runner on base. Again, as we've seen all day, corners up, middle playing back for two. And that one goes high and off the glove of Carson. Down to second goes Dana Kennedy, and now runner in scoring position in a one-run ball game, 5-4 to four Michigan on top. Not really sure what it is, but Hannah Carson's had a lot more trouble handling those high balls in this game as opposed to in that first. 1-0 count, runner on second now. Maybe a bunt coming from Boris. She shows it before the at-bat. Now watches it float in for a ball 2-0. Storaco fell behind 3-0 in that last at-bat. The one good thing about Storaco 
in these situations is that even with runners on in scoring position, she goes to the strikeout so much. Don't have to worry about contact as much. But needs to keep the ball where Carson can grab it. 2-0 is in the dirt. Another 3-0 count. Big lead over there on second base from Kennedy. Overitis is going to come over and chat to Sirocco for a minute. Try and calm her down. As USF, they've been ready for this game for a long time. They continue to warm up. They were sitting on the dugout, and now they've gone out into the outfield beyond the fence and into the Michigan bullpen, trying to keep loose. 3-0. There's a ball inside, and that will put two runners aboard with one out in this inning. That one looks straight as an arrow, but apparently must have been a little low. Now Cheval stands in with two runners aboard and one out. Straco just trying to shake it off in this high-stress situation. It has been high-stress situation after high-stress situation, and Carol Hutchins goes out there to talk to Alex. Michigan still up one with a 5-4 lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Illinois State with two more at-bats if they need it. Michigan with one. It's been a very tight game all game. You know, Michigan got up to that uh, two-run lead in the top of the third. And then going into the bottom of the third, Illinois State put up three runs. One of those coming off a solo shot. Illinois State has played some really good softball thus far, all weekend, really. So two runners aboard. Cheval in the batter's box, Mac Leonard on deck. Straco just has to work one batter at a time. Infield, almost half shaded now. Carson grabs that one as it bounces in. Both Illinois State runners getting real big leads coming off the pitch. one the count. They will be ready to run if it's put in play. That pitch a called strike at the top of the zone. Yeah, that one a no doubter right down the middle. Good comeback from Starocco after a four pitch walk and a first ball in this half bat. 1-1 one, one count. Checking her wristband, setting back up in the circle, spinning the ball in her right hand. The wind up, the 1-1 one, one coming, swing and a miss, just chasing it up high as Cheval really didn't see it well at all. And now Sirocco ahead in the count, one and two. That's where Sirocco capitalized on Georgia State all first game, getting people to chase up high in the zone, showing that again as she works her way into advantage right here. One, two in this count. Spins the ball in the right hand. Gets ready to go to work. One, two coming. Got her strike three on the edge. Great pitch by Starocco. Second strikeout of the game. Tom Meyer's been going with those really slow motion strikeout calls. Waiting a second before each one, keeping everybody in suspense. But now here's Mac Leonard. She started this game as a pitcher, still in this game as a hitter, a pretty darn good hitter at that. Two outs and two on. Leonard shows bunt, pulls it back, takes strike one. That's a big first strike for Starocco to keep the momentum going. Absolutely. Always good to get up early in the count, especially against a good hitter like Leonard. Leonard hit 300 a year ago, but not much of a power hitter. No home runs last season, just one extra base hit. 0-1 coming way out in front of it, 0-2. Looks like Leonard was almost taking a practice swing on that one. Feet didn't really move, just the arms came through. Now Starocco ahead, 0-2, one strike away from wiggling out of another jam and stranding two Redbirds. Starocco looking extremely confident there in the circle on the mound. Checks the wrist, the 0-2 coming. Got her, strike three, right down the middle. A three-pitch strikeout for Alex Starocco. Illinois State puts two aboard, but they leave two. And now Michigan, three outs away from victory, but will look to get some more insurance in the top of the seventh. Our score, Michigan, five. Illinois State, four. You're listening 
to Michigan softball on WCBN Sports. And yeah, not that I think Storaco needs it, but a couple insurance runs would be helpful. Wolverine's going to look to come out and put up a couple more here at their last at bat of the game, hopefully in the top of the seventh. Morgan Day, number 29 for the Illinois State Redbirds, going to come back in to pitch. Really clutch pitching there from Alex Duraco to wiggle out of the jam. Got a shout out from Dayton, Ohio as well. Take a look at this Illinois State team as Morgan Day goes back to work and she pitched seven innings yesterday. Seven hits, two walks, but only three runs allowed. Got 12 strikeouts and she's been really good so far in this game in striking out Wolverines. She had that really solid ERA of 3-2-6 last season and if Illinois State is going to make a a jump this season into the tournament. Going to need good pitching, and Day has seemed to be that so far. Michigan will have Allen over Reitus and Carson 3-4-5 up here in the top of the seventh. Lou Allen looking to stay hot on the day. Hasn't been too productive in this game. She struggled going 0-2. The last game, a double and a home run. Still got to be feeling pretty good about that one. Sitting in the on-deck circle over there is Overitis. She has a hit in this game. So we are set to go here in the top of the seventh day, stepping back up to the mound. And Allen checks in. First pitch called strike. Day's commands look pretty good thus far. She entered in the game with two on and no out in the fifth. Got through that inning, allowing a double and gave up a single in the sixth, but got some help from her defense. LaFontaine gunned down Blair to end the inning. That was with Allen at the plate. Now she waits for the 0-1. It's down and in, 1-1. One and one. Good eye there by Allen letting that one go by. Count evens back up, as you said. Day back on the mound, looking to deliver the 1-1 pitch. Allen takes it. I guess a little low for a ball. That one looked pretty good. After this game will be USF and Fresno State. They've been waiting forever as this game has now been going on for over two hours and 15 minutes. And then Illinois State's got one more to play this evening against Florida. So two more games on tap. Michigan will be done after this one, though, until tomorrow. 2-1. Lou takes it for a strike, 2-2. Two and two. Score Michigan 5, US, or sorry, Illinois State 4 here at the USF Softball Complex in Tampa, Florida. Infield now well over half the way shaded as the sun has been continuing to set. Lou fouls it back to the screen. Two and two it remains. Good piece of hitting there to foul that one off. High and inside, nothing she could do with it besides poke that one foul. She's going to get her chance again. 2-2 two, two with no outs. Michigan looking to get some insurance runs in this inning. Could start some momentum up with the hit from Lou Allen here. 2-2, two, two, she swings and golfs. This one in the infield, charging and making the play out of the air is Olsen for the first out. Yeah, a little too much air on that one. Just kept it up. Allows Olsen to come over and make that catch. It's going to be over right stepping in the box now. The lefty sophomore as there's one out. Over right is today. One for two with a walk. Had an RBI single in the first. Hit some balls hard all day today. She swings and misses on the first pitch from Morgan Day. Starting to get a little chillier up here on the Donaldson deck as the sun has started to set. Now feels like 58, temperature of 60. It's been sunny all day though. 0-1. Overitis checks her swing. She went around, says third base umpire Terry Holt. Morgan Day called that one as soon as it happened. Overitis with her check swing. Day pointed right at the umpire to make sure he checked it. Apparently she did go around now down in an 0-2 hole. Here's the pitch. Tap her right back up the middle. It's going to go to Olsen. It's got to be a quick play. Not going to have enough time, though. It'll be an infield single for Overitis. She's aboard now. With one out in the inning, Hannah Carson now come to the plate. And you can see a pinch runner for Overitis. She's pretty speedy herself. Probably leave her in, but 
you could make a switch if you wanted to. And Bonnie Thole's going to come over to talk to Hutch, potentially about that kind of substitution. And now LaFontaine will go out to talk with Day. This game has continued to slow down. It's just been a battle. And we've mentioned this before, but you know Megan Bobian did not seem to be at her best today, but it also does not feel like Michigan's playing super poorly. I mean, this is an Illinois State team that feels like they belong on this field. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Illinois State struggled a bit last year, but coming into this game, they've been they've played very, very well. You know, the bats have been hot. Their defense has been solid all the way around. There's been outstanding outfield play thus far. And Morgan Day has just been having herself a day, pun intended. 5-4 Wolverines on top. They've got a runner on first. Hannah Carson checks back in. She gets ready for the first pitch. Over right is down there at first. Strike right down the middle. Quick game recap. Michigan got one in the first, one in the second. They were up 2-0. Illinois State got one back on a homer. Wolverines went up 4-1 in the top of the third. Then Illinois State got another solo homer. Some clutch hitting and an error to tie the game at four in the bottom of the third. 0-1 to over right as she lays down the bunt right to Day. Throws it over to first for the out. Runner moves up. Now two outs for Jimenez, and it is this player right here, Julia Jimenez, who put Michigan on top in the fifth. Just a couple runners on, and Jimenez pounded one to right center over the head of the center fielder Weeble. It got down, and a run scored. That made it 5-4. to four. That's where the game sits right now with a runner on second and two outs. Jimenez, another opportunity to get an RBI. Yeah, Jimenez has been making an impact on both sides of the game all day long in this game and the last. Seems like every ball to come off her bat has just been an absolute rocket. First pitch, swing and a high fly ball into left field, sizing it up, coming in, and making the play is Cheval. So Michigan will strand another base runner. And that fly out to left field, pretty solid hit ball. But regardless, that will end the frame. And here we go. Three outs to get for Alex Starocco in Michigan. We'll go back to the hotel victorious. I suppose so will we, but. Starocco has got to do her job here first. Yep, and that is never, ever easy against this lineup. It'll be Moffitt, Olsen, and Weevil, two, three, four. Meet of the order for Illinois State. Here looking for the game tying run as we approach the five o'clock hour Eastern here in Tampa, Florida. Yeah, like you said, this game a much longer one than the last. Couple more shout outs, one from Georgia, one from Victoria, Texas. One guy says he was at game one today had to get back to St. Pete. You can listen to us in the stadium too if you bring your earbuds. Or if you just have like a really big cone, I guess, next to your head <laughs> pointed in our direction. <laughs> I don't think Drain and I talk that loud, but I guess we could yell if you really want us to. We've been joined here on Media Row recently. A couple folks from USF to our right and a fellow from Florida to our left. Both of those teams will have games later on in the evening. This guy from Florida, he's got the game after USF Fresno State. He could be here a while. Yeah, he staked his claim early. He sat down and he hasn't moved He's since. got his headset on. And don't know if he knows his game isn't going to be for a while. But Starocco, Starocco is out there. She's on the rubber. Moffitt digs in. One for three today with a single. She swings and fouls this one back. Got all of it. She's hit some balls hard today. Two flyouts to right and a single. Becca Moffitt, dangerous hitter. Sturaco stares in, winds up. 0-1 coming is a little high. That ball, like you said, goes high and outside, brings the count to 1-1. The Florida softball team walking into the stadium now out in left field. Yeah, they're just getting off the bus, it looks like. 1-1 one, one count, Starocko winds up the pitch way out in front. Oz Moffitt and chasing the changeup, one and two. Starocko mixing the pace of her pitches well 
all day. She got three strikeouts in that sixth. Now ahead, one and two. The lined up, the pitch, swing and a miss. Chasing the change up again. And down goes Moffitt, one out. Great pitch by Starocco. Again, she's been dominant all day long. And that brings up Emma Olsen. Olsen and then Weeble, three and four. Here still standing in the way with one out in the bottom of the seventh. Five to four, Michigan on top over Illinois State. Michigan with their primary defensive lineup out there, looking to cut anything they can. First pitch goes a little high. Overitis at second, or rather, yeah, Jimenez has been reinserted. Overitis had been there all game. I think would probably mean that Michigan feels more comfortable with Jimenez there in the field. Allen still at first, Rodriguez at short, Uden at third. The 1-0 is a called strike, took a lot off that one, and it just floats in for a called strike. Nice pitch there by Starocco. Like we said earlier, sacrificing velocity for accuracy. Nice pitch to get the count even back up. 1-1 one, one count. The wind up, the pitch, strike on the outer edge, one and two. And the Illinois State crowd not super happy about that. Olsen today, a strikeout looking in the first and then a pair of walks in the third and the fifth. Fourth time up here in the seventh. Now down in the count, one and two, trying to avoid the same fate as her teammates against Duraco. The wind up, the one, two, swing and a ball hit. Well foul. And getting out of the way there is the first base coach. Olsen got absolutely all of that one. Got all the way around it and pulled that one hard towards the Michigan dugout. And the USF team down there in the bullpen. They've changed location from atop the Michigan dugout. Trying to keep the blood flowing as this game is dragged on. One, two coming, swing and a miss. Stiracco powers it by Olsen. And now Weeble, the last hope. Starocco putting up a career day today after posting her career high for strikeouts with 16 in that first game. Hasn't missed a beat here since she's come in. And now Alyssa Weeble, one for three, a home run, fielder's choice, and a strikeout swinging. First pitch floats in for a called strike. 55 miles an hour right there. Weeble was a 260 hitter last year but led the team with six homers, pounded one out earlier in this game. She was 1 0 for 4 with an RBI yesterday against USF. 0 1 coming, thought about chasing it, but holds off 1 and 1. The Illinois State dugout all has their visors on upside down, got their rally caps going. As they try to inch this one back out, Michigan still leads though 5 4 with two outs in the bottom of the seventh. You always have to be so careful in this situation against a power hitter like Weeble. Starocko trying to do just that. 1-1 one, one count. The pitch, swing and a miss. Starocko now one strike away from cleaning this one up. Be a huge, huge three-inning save and send Michigan to 2-0 on the 2020 season. Starocko looks into the dugout, checks the wristband. Spins the ball, Michigan crowd clapping. Weeble lines it up, the one, two on the way. Just inside. Everybody in the stadium <laughs> wanted that one. They were all holding their breath. And there's some chanting now going on. Two and two, the count. Straco has to take a big sigh and refocus herself. One more strike to get. Uden holds her glove up trying to see this pitch, Starocko puts it in the glove. 2-2 coming, swing and a foul back. And the USF crowd right now, they are really cheering for Michigan because they want their game to finally start. They want to get going. <laughs> so it feels like a really a home crowd advantage right now when you have the Michigan and the USF people cheering in unison. Not a whole lot of Redbirds fans here. 2-2 count. Starocko readies herself. Her 26th pitch of the game. The wind up, here it is, in the dirt. Good block by Carson. Three and two. Straco went off speed and just 
lost control of it. Three into the count, that one at 55 miles an hour. More tense than ever here, full <laughs> count. <laughs> Three and two. Storaco settles herself down. 3-2 coming, floats a little high and outside, and Illinois State's got the tying run on. Honestly, if I'm Michigan, I'm a little happier Yeah, it's with Corsi coming up to the plate. Definitely feels like you'd rather attack Andrea Corsi than Alyssa Weeble after the way she hit that homer, but now you have the tying run on and the winning run at the plate. That's the danger. Storaco spins the ball in her hand, has to shake it off. First pitch, swing and a miss. Storaco just blew that one by her. No messing around there. Fastball right down the middle. And Corsi didn't look totally clued in on what was coming right there. Caught off guard and a bad swing. 67 miles an hour. That's near the top that we've seen from Storaco today. 0-1 right there again. Swing and a miss upstairs. It's what we saw against Georgia State, those high fastballs. Does she go to it one more time? I almost think you have to. She hasn't touched it. She's 0 for 3 on the day already. Three strikeouts, too. Exactly. Don't mess around. You don't want to put an off-speed pitch in the dirt and allow a runner get to uh, get into scoring position. 0 and 2. Storaco, one strike away again. The windup, the pitch. Swing and a miss. And Michigan gets it done. A check swing from Corsi, but she went around. And the Wolverines wiggle out of a tense game here in Tampa. That one way high. But Sirocco, again, able to do what she's done all day, get pitcher, or get hitters to chase. Hitters, rather. She had a fantastic day. 16 strikeouts in the first, a good number in this game. In Michigan, 2-0 on the 2020 season. It was not easy, and certainly Illinois State, a lot tougher of an opponent than perhaps thought entering the weekend, but Michigan got it done. Wow. Yeah. Wow is right. <laughs> that was a really tense effort, and Michigan will have to come back focused and ready to play tomorrow against Florida. That game will start at 145, give or take, and they'll play USF afterwards. But until then, once again, our final score, Michigan 5, Illinois State 4. I want to thank you for joining us on WCBN Sports. And we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, for Charlie Brigham, Alex Drain, good night and go blue.